Yes, welcome everyone here to the Smash Evening Show right here on Smash FM here on Australia Day here in Melbourne. Of course, uh, let's go across to our friends over in the US. It is great to have this amazing uh, cheerleading team back on the show again because that is the LA Rams cheerleaders. And of course, we've got two very special guests on the show, including one we actually had last time we were over in LA. And of course, they both joined us right now. Thanks uh, both for joining us. Yeah, we're so happy to be here. Thank you for having us. No worries. Well, get both of you to introduce yourselves and tell us uh, what season did both of you just finish as part of the LA Rams cheerleaders? Uh, my <laughs> name is Emily. Um, we just wrapped up our 2023-2024 season. Uh, this was my second year as a cheerleader for the Los Angeles Rams. And my name is Gabby. Um, I also just wrapped this season as well. And this was my third season with the Los Angeles Rams. Um, it's been an incredible year. And um, now we're just looking forward to all different travel opportunity we have, as well as, um, you know, other community events we do all throughout the season. I know that uh, since the season finished, especially your home game finished uh, probably about a month ago now, I know that the team has been out in the community of uh, of Los Angeles uh, to do community events, include, and also I think uh, some years went to the uh, Crypto dot com Arena game uh, involving the Kings, um, and I think it might have been the Lakers in there somewhere as well. Uh, tell us a bit about that. If both were involved in any of those Crypto dot com Arena games. Unfortunately, I was supposed to be on the Kings game at uh, Crypto. However, I unfortunately caught COVID, so oh. <laughs> I could not attend it. I've never been to an LA Kings game. I've never been to a hockey game in general, so I was so excited. I really wanted to perform. I think uh, Puka Nakua was there. We had Kobe Turner, and I think we had one other rookie there for the Los Angeles Rams night uh, with the Kings, but I was not there, but I heard the performance was amazing. Um, they did it, I think, at like their their halftime at the Kings game. So it, it looked amazing, and I wish I was there. <laughs> yeah, likewise, I unfortunately wasn't there either. I had to work, <laughs> but you know what? There was amazing footage online um, of everybody dancing, and um, it looked like they had an incredible time. I have not yet been to Crypto.com Arena so definitely that's on my bucket list to, of things to do here in LA, whether that's a Laker game or LA Kings, um, definitely need to go check it out. Oh, so, uh, some of the team are also going on military uh, uh, visits as well around the world. Um, are any of you involved in that? Emily is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, so... Last year uh, was my first year on the team, and I was lucky enough to get chosen to travel to Hawaii to visit our military, and we were there for about two weeks, so it was a pretty extensive trip, and we have a pretty large um, couple of military bases, bases um on the islands of Hawaii. So I went with my teammate, Courtney. Um, there were 10 cheerleaders from the NFL. So if you weren't aware, so there is this company called Pro Tours and they invite all of the cheerleaders in the NFL to travel across the world to visit our military um, on what they call military pro tours. We do this over Super Bowl weekend. Um, that way we can watch the game with our military who are football fans. Um, they like to mix us up. So the group that went to Hawaii was representative of the Rams. We had the Denver Broncos. We had Seattle Seahawks, Atlanta Fal Falcons, uh, the Indiana Colts, and the Miami Dolphins. So, oh, Tennessee Titans were there as well. So it's a big group um, that goes to, you know, the bases around the world. Um, but we were there for about two weeks. We got to meet all of our military that you know are stationed in Hawaii. We learned what they do. Um, we saw all of their equipment. We also learned, you know, how many, you know, people are fans of the Rams or the Seahawks. So got to watch the uh, Super Bowl with them as well at one of their restaurants on base, and it was truly the most rewarding experience and uh, traveling opportunity that I've had to date. 
Uh, any going in the next couple of weeks? I will be traveling to Japan, which Ooh. I'm super stoked about. Yes, um, it's going to be a quicker trip. So Hawaii was two weeks. Um, Japan is only going to be, I think, about five days. So it'll be a long flight to get there and a long flight back, but it will certainly be worth the trip. I have no doubt. And I'm excited to meet the military that is stationed um, over there. I think I'm going to be visiting the Okinawa base. So that'll be very cool. I've never been to Japan before. Um, I'm going with my teammate, Kendra. And we have a few other pro tours happening as well. I'm not sure the specific locations, um, but they are sending us again this year. And it's it's going to be amazing. No, maybe you uh, might have been a couple of uh, months into last year that uh, some of the cheerleaders went down to our part of the country, uh, to, to Sydney. Um, did any of you went to that one? No, no. Uh, our teammates <laughs> that went on that trip were not here, but um, I can say that they had the most incredible time. I know all of us wish we could have gone as well. It was a trip for four of us. And um, I believe they visited Melbourne. They went to Sydney. They also toured Alice Springs, I believe. So they kind of bopped around and it looked absolutely incredible. I know they were there for World Pride and, sure. you know, I still hear from them and, and how much they loved that trip and how it, it was such a memorable experience for them. So um, it's really exciting that we're able to have a lot of presence in Australia. And I hope that that, of course, continues with other opportunities and events. How cool would it be for both of you to come to Australia this time around uh, when the team comes down to, to Australia again now? Oh, well, the next trip, we're going to have to now. We have to, you're, we we'll have to go there. Where are you located? Melbourne. Okay. <laughs> we are going to have to visit you guys next time we come. Now, tell us a bit about, I know that the Rams made the playoffs this year, um, which is awesome. Um, how cool is it on game day to be at SoFi? SoFi is an incredible stadium of course it's newly built but it's just the energy in SoFi when you're standing there on the sidelines cheering out towards the fans it is an experience like no other and it really is very intimate as well at least from where we're standing although you can still see people so well all the way up high um it's just it's just so cool um and it's such a joy to just see everybody out there um, and their faces so vividly. I mean, Emily, I don't know how you feel, but I feel like I'm like right in front of people sometimes, but it's such a cool experience. It's really, yeah. it makes, there's, there. it's such a privilege to be a part of this team for so many reasons. And that is another reason as well as just to, to be so lucky to cheer in that stadium. Yeah. And I would say this season specifically, we, did not start our, our football team did not start off super strong. And then I think, I think we were like three, three and six, maybe something like that. And suddenly after the bye week it clicked and we went on a winning roll when we are winning and when our fans are packed in SoFi, that energy is like no other. And when we are standing on the field and you're looking up into the audience with fans shaking their towels and, you know, third down when we're on defense and they're up and they're screaming and they're jumping, like we feed off of that energy. It is it's so hard to describe it because, you know, you got to be on the field, you know, to feel the energy and to feel the fans, you know, they're so passionate and it just makes us so much more passionate too about what we do um, and about the team that we're cheering for. So it's, it's like nothing I can explain. <laughs> it feels electric in there. It feels electric. and like the music too. The music is blasting. The the team just you know had an amazing play. Everybody just jumps up out of their seats. They're waving their their towels around. It's just it, it kind of feels like a movie sometimes. Yeah, 
It doesn't like, feel real. Yeah. yeah, it really doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> you are in Hollywood after all. Uh, so... <laughs> <laughs> Both for Alabama so far, it's an amazing, amazing stadium. It's a pretty unique stadium concert. It is sh- domed, but not really because you got, you know, the the wind, the you know, the breeze still coming through. And, uh, there's like an open air slash dome stadium. Um, how cool is it to have something like that? And you know, and it's not like fully closed. It's great for us because we, you know, it gets so hot in Los Angeles and we're unlike, you know, any of the teams, you know, in the Midwest or the East coast where either they're open or they're closed. Um, but our weather is so hot. I can't imagine if we did have a closed roof, I would think it would get stuffy, um, and maybe not as ventilated. So having those openings on the side and the the way that they structured and engineered the stadium really allows for you to feel, you know, it's it's wide it's open it's it's fresh um you know it's you're not claustrophobic <laughs> yeah. yeah you still feel like you're outside even though you're not so that's always good but we we're also really lucky cuz you know there has been a couple games i think where it was rainy or drizzly so we didn't have to really worry about that too much. I have friends back on the East coast on other teams where they're exposed to all the elements and they have to perform in all the elements. So I feel we're very, very spoiled out in LA in general, but especially with the way the stadium is structured. Tell us a bit about your pro bowl uh, Chile who's going to Orlando next week. Um, she's amazing and we all look up to her so much. She is brilliant and she is career driven. She is the most genuine, kind, passionate soul. She's a friend to everyone. Um, she works so hard. She grinds at her day job and then shows up to practice, knows her stuff. Um, she's so reliable She's getting married <laughs> this year. Um, she's just amazing. And it's it's who we're talking to right now. It's Miss Gabby. <laughs> hey. Gosh, Emily, you're so sweet. I'm getting emotional. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was recently announced. I think it was about two weeks ago. Um, and it, it, it truly is such an honor. And the way we do it on our team is we do do a team vote. So it feels that much more, you know, special and intimate that the the team, like your teammates have a say, but most importantly, I think just everything this organization is about, we're very community driven. We are truly what we call a Ramily. So family Rams, Ramily, but it's so true. Um, We really look out for one another. And, you know, I think about all the times where, you know, everybody sees the glamour of you know, NFL cheerleader or when we're out on the on game day in uniform, all glammed out with our eyelashes and our earrings and our hair curled. But the most special moments um, are the moments where it, it's the hard work. It's the really late night practices after everyone's had a really long day. And we all come from different walks of life. Like that's what I love about this team so much. Um, all different ages, all different stages of life. And we come together for this shared passion of doing what we love and being there for one another and being good role models to our community and cheering for a team that is so special to all of us in so many ways. And when I just kind of bottle that all up into this feeling that I get, just feeling like I'm going to represent this team in Orlando, it just makes me, I, I'm speechless still. I'm so honored and I'm so excited. and. Pro Bowl in general, just being able to get everybody together from all different teams, you know, that's what it's all about. It's this community, it's supporting one another. Um, Emily kind of mentioned it as well, even with her pro tour experience last year, but it's such an invaluable time and experience to come together with all these other people from other teams as well and learn about them. And that's just what makes this so worthwhile it's it's the people it's the people you meet and surround yourself with and you know it's 
it's something that I think, you know, I'll, I'll cherish Pro Bowl. I didn't even go yet. I'm like, I'm going to cherish it for the rest of my life in this experience. <laughs> but, but in general, just being an NFL cheerleader, it really is so much more than what it seems. And so, um, yeah, I think we're all extremely lucky to be able yeah. to experience it. And Gabby's going to be the best representative of our team <laughs> and what we stand for um, at the Los Angeles Rams. So we're so excited for you, Gabby. Thank you. I hope so. Hope to make everybody proud. <laughs> I got a chance to enter another pro bowl that's going to Orlando just recently in, um, over at Cincinnati. Um, but, so I'm going to ask you this question, Gabby, uh, the next couple, which is when did you find out that you got the Pro Bowl and how was it delivered to you? Oh, okay. Um, when do we find, I, I think it was like two or three weeks ago um, that I that we found out. We typically announce a little bit later. Every team is different in the way they announce. Um, the way that the Los Angeles Rams announces is through like a social media post. Um, funny enough, I when when it was announced, I was actually on a hike. So I love hiking in my free time and where I live in LA is I am walking distance to like a really great fun hike. My dog loves it. It's just anyways, it's it's definitely a part of my daily routine. And it was so funny because that day I actually wasn't feeling well. I stayed home from work um, because I was just a little bit under the weather, but I really wanted to take my dog out, get some fresh air. And I decided to leave my phone in my apartment. I was like, Oh, I don't need it. My friend was coming to just to, to hike with me. I was like, okay, just social distance. Cause I'm not feeling well, but she's one of my teammates. And so towards the end of the hike, we were walking down and she stopped in her tracks and just gave me this like crazy look. And I was like, her name's Sydney. I was like, Sydney, are you okay? She was just looking at me. So it was just this bizarre look. And she was like, you got pro bowl. And I just like stopped in my tracks. And of course I was so excited, but my immediate reaction was like, let me just pick my dog up and spin him around. So that's what I did. But yeah, so it was, it was very funny how that all came about. You know, a lot of, a lot of the representatives that I've been speaking with, of course, like they have like these in-game announcements and it's a little bit more of like a formal announcement, but um, I'm kind of grateful because I feel like I was just in such shock and I have so much respect for these other women and men that are able to be announced game day and then still have to like perform and like call out sidelines if they're a captain. And thankfully for me, it was a little bit more intimate. And of course I didn't even have my phone, so, <laughs> but it was, I'll never forget that too. It was so funny the way she looked at me and so yeah, that's that's how it happened. That's how I found out. <laughs> okay, so Gabby, <laughs> I've never had I've never had that answer before uh, to that question. So I'm gonna it's I'm different. gonna <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm gonna ask you then when you eventually got back to your apartment and finally got a chance to look at your phone, how many missed calls did you get? Oh my goodness. My phone just kept on ringing and ringing and ringing and it, it's the best feeling, but of course it's a bit overwhelming. I don't know the number, but I immediately felt so overwhelmed with love and support. And it was, it was the greatest feeling ever to, to have so many of my close friends and family reach out already and congratulate me and just say like really kind things. Um, so it was great. It was definitely a lot. I was like, Oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin with this, but <laughs> it was, it was great. Yeah. How did both of you get involved with the LA Rams and why did you choose it? Emily, you can answer the same question again. I know you answered this a couple of years ago. I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He's like, what was my response? I don't remember. So, I mean, yeah, I guess. So I had a friend and I probably said this last year, but I had a friend that took me to the NFC championship game. Um, and I remember it, this was in the Super Bowl year. So 2021. And I remember watching um, the cheerleaders at, you know, the timeouts and um, in the corners throughout the game. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, I, I 
I want to do this. Like I, it was just the energy for that game specifically. They were playing the 49ers. It was insane. And we won that game. And I was like, I have to do it. And then we won the Super Bowl. And I was like, I have to be a part of this team. Um, I grew up dancing my entire life. I was on the dance team at UCLA. Um, so I had always wanted to join a professional team after graduating college, but I graduated during the pandemic. So mm -hmm. the opportunity was very slim. Um, and I wasn't sure that I wanted to continue dancing, especially now with things being closed and, you know, the mask mandates, it was difficult. Um, so I put dancing to a pause, but then in 2021, things started to open up again. And then I saw the game. I saw, you know, the cheerleaders. I reached out to um, one of my friends from high school, Shelby, um, and I talked to her about it. So that kind of just got the ball rolling and got me really inspired. Um, and that's when I decided to try out. And I was lucky enough to make it on, you know, my first try. It's been the best decision that I've ever made. So that's my story. <laughs> um, for me, it, I mean, it all started. So I, I've lived in a couple cities before LA, but, um, I started in Boston and I got into the, the pro dance, you know, community and industry there. Um, so my friend that I danced with on the Celtics, which is an NBA team in Boston, she is originally from California and we danced together for one year on that team became best friends. Her name's Kalia. And then she moved back to California. I continued on with Celtics a few more years, but, um, ultimately in 2020, when the pandemic happened, I was already thinking about, okay, I'm ready for a change. I want to move to Los Angeles. And my best friend Kalia was on the Rams for two years prior. So she moved, she moved out, tried out, made the team. And then, you know, a few years later, I moved out and it was middle, of, I think it was, yeah, August, 2020. So um, tryouts for the next year was not until the following May. So mm -hmm. from the time I moved in August until like the applications came out in May, she was like, Gabby, you have to try it. Like, I don't think you're done with dancing yet. You're going to love this team. And I just remember her talking about all the amazing things that they, the Rams was doing not only just with game day and of course that, but with international travel and also, you know, the work they do in the community. And she was just doing so, she just had so many fulfilling stories and she's like, you would love this. It's not the, the schedule is not as crazy as NBA, which like there's games all the time. So it's just more doable, especially as I was going further and further in my career. And so ultimately she just convinced me to try out and I tried out, um, yeah, May of 2021 and made the team and had one year with her on the team, which was really exciting. And I still can't believe it, but my first year on the team was the year that we went to Super Bowl and won Super Bowl. So it was the most surreal year I think ever, but yeah, that's a little bit of my story on, you know, what, what kind of drove me to try out for this team. It was definitely a lot to do with my, one of my closest friends, Kalia. Gabby, I need to ask you this. So you've been part of the NBA um, for one of the most historic teams uh, in franchises <laughs> in the NBA history in the Boston Celtics. And knowing their fans, and then you've moved to another big city in Los Angeles, which obviously the Lakers is another historic one, but you've gone mm -hmm. to the Rams, who are one of the most famous uh, ones in the NFL. Can you compare the two, and have you ever thought about doing both, like NBA and NFL, Because especially, you know, go from the Celtics to the Lakers maybe, or uh, as well as doing the Rams? It's so hard. The, the the teams, it's just so different. Um, the fans in Boston are just they're diehard fans. Um, but you know, I've been truly loving seeing the commitment of the fans here in LA and how passionate they are as well. So there are a lot of similarities there. Um, I think it's different because LA also has multiple teams. 
So there's different fan bases kind of split among, especially with chargers coming up to, to Los Angeles as well. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful for both experiences. They're so different. Um, and I've learned so much from both. I do definitely feel like I prefer the NFL just with the way the structure is with practices and games. And I will say what I love most too is the Los Angeles Rams. I keep saying it, but we do so much work in the community and it's so fulfilling. And for someone that isn't from California to move here and be a part of a team that one, like I have my teammates who are like family to me, but also to be able to branch out into all different areas of Los Angeles, even like San Diego County, we go, you know, we pretty much don't say no, we'll go anywhere. And so that has been something that's been so rewarding is, you know, being really immersed in this community and getting to know LA in a way that I wouldn't have had I not joined the team. And that is one of the differences with Celtics is, you know, it was, it was more optional. We definitely still did community work, but it's really, um, it's definitely a high priority on this team and it's just as important as game day. And so it's really changed who I am and my perspective. And I think, you know, it, it brought, it brings us all closer as well when we're able to share these really special moments, um, together in the community, whether that's helping out in Christmas time with food drives or we, we honestly do everything. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, it's different, but it's amazing. Bye Fieri, two part question, which is what does being part of the LA Rams cheerleaders mean to both of you? And the second part is what have both of you learned from each other on and off the field? Those are Great questions. Um, being a <laughs> Los Angeles Rams cheerleader uh, means being a part of an organization, like Gabby was saying, that cares so much about mentoring and fostering this community um, and really, really, really providing a strong foundation where it's needed, um, you know, where our fans live and where, um, you know, we, we, this organization just cares so much about its people um and because of all of the community events that we do you feel immersed in this community I grew up in Los Angeles so I you know I love this place this is you know what raised me so to give back to you know the community that you know made me the woman that I am today just it means everything and then to do it with you know, some of my best friends to do it while dancing and cheering and you put, you know, football with it too. It's just, it means so much to me and the fact that I can still keep dancing um, and that I can be myself and not have to change the way I look or, you know, what I like and things like that. I, they, this organization is just so accepting of who we are and, you know, each person brings something different to the table and we love each other so much and that's you know everything that you know the Los Angeles Rams stands for so um it's infectious and it's an incredible organization to be uh, a part of oh compassion um empathy um hard work she's like a mentor to so many of us um we I just I look up to Gabby in so many different ways. I've gone to her with career advice. We kind of were dealing with some similar issues in our careers. Um, so she was someone that I really went to and leaned on to get advice from. Um, she's like a, a mini mom <laughs> to so many of us. Um, uh, You're like a mom to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I love Gabby so much. <laughs> I love you, Em. I'll piggyback off that. Maybe I'll go in reverse, but, um, you know, with Emily, I've learned just how, what it means to just be such a natural leader. Like she, she walks into the room and she, she just naturally leads and she, she doesn't have to be like, she doesn't have to be really outspoken, but she comes in, she, she's always one to, like know what she's doing, but also help anyone. Um, she's one of the most warm, approachable, kind people you'll ever meet. 
Um, and that's something that I really admire as well is, you know, she's just like this quiet force, but she is this little <laughs> force to be reckoned with. Um, and yeah, I, Emily mentioned it, but like we, we lean on each other for other things and she's so hardworking. She's so smart and she's so determined to, um, just always, you know, take every day and, and ha ask herself, how did I get better? How did I grow? Um, how did I make others feel? And did I help other people? How, like, she's always just trying to be better and it it's infectious and it inspires me to do the same. She's just like one of the most genuine heart of gold, gold people I've ever met. So yeah, I, I mean, we learn from each other every day too, but she's, She's, this is like a love fest right now. No. But, <laughs> Thanks, um, Gabby. Like, we're, we're just, yeah, we're just, we're just so lucky to like, you know, be able to do what we love and like be around each other and support each other. And um, it definitely changes who you are, you know, before we met each other, before we shared this experience on the team together, we've been on the team two years. So um yeah, it's, it's really special. It's a bond that we're going to have for the rest of our lives. Um, and then to answer your other question of what it means to be a Rams cheerleader, Emily summed it up in such a beautiful way, but I think that this team is a team that they want, they, they celebrate individuality. You know, we, we don't have to look all the same or, and, and we celebrate having male cheerleaders on the team and they are incredible and they are they inspire me every day. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're such incredible dancers. I need to step it up. I need to put more energy in my move. I need to be sharper. So, um, but anyways, I'm kind of rambling right now, but <laughs> it's all about diversity and being, being the role models to the younger generation and to people in the community and redefining again, what it means to be an NFL cheerleader because it's not just, again, it's not just game day and the glitz and the glam. It's it, every single person on this team works so hard and has such a beautiful story. And, and we celebrate how different e each of our experiences are um, and who we are. And even I remember on auditions, you know, auditions are nerve wracking, but I always, I'll always say to myself, and it's something that I've like said to my teammates as well. Um, you know, there's only one you and you're on this team for a reason. There's mm -hmm. not two Emily's on the team and there's not two Gabby's. And so, um, it, yeah, and just the Rams, we really celebrate diversity and making sure that everybody feels seen and heard and represented. And, you know, we're, we're here to just inspire the younger generation and the people of the community. That was probably the best answer I've had <laughs> for those two questions. There was so much <laughs> love. So much love. Uh, so, so we'll finish off with a couple of lighthearted questions now about the team, uh, which is uh, who's the comedian and the best thing on the team? Comedian. Oh, my God. Comedian. Okay. I think the team comedian is for sure Eswin. Eswin oh just, he has the, he's a, he has this personality. He just comes in and he's such a bright light. He just, he'll say like little things and just everybody just cracks up. He just likes to poke fun at people, but he does it in such a playful, like funny, sweet way. Um, he's also, you know, I call him like my little JLo because he's just sassy and fun and Pearson. an incredible dancer. <laughs> but I don't know. I think we have, um, I mean, we have a lot of comedians. What do you think, Emily? I don't know. Eswin was the first one that came to mind. Um, Eswin is hilarious. I, Brendan makes me laugh a lot. Um, I'm trying to think who else. Everyone Sydney, has. You know, Sydney's a little bit of a comedian. Oh gosh, Sydney yeah. is so <laughs> funny. No, <laughs> Sydney definitely is one of the ones who is hilarious. Yeah, we have, we have a good time. We're all really goofy. Yeah, we're yeah. all really goofy too. We all have like a similar sense of humor, which is great. Like everybody's just super silly, goofy. And so it all works. If someone says something funny, like we're all laughing, you know? So, and once it hits 11 o'clock at night, we're delirious. And 
<laughs> Everything turns funny. Yeah, at, at 11 p.m., when you started your day at like 5.30 in the morning and you finished your day at 11 a.m., everything is funny. Everything yeah. is funny. So, um, but in terms of who, who would be the team singer? I don't know. I feel like oh, that's also Tyler. Eswin. I'm like calling him J-Lo. Oh, so. Eswin, yes. Um, I, Tyler has a beautiful voice. I don't know if you've heard Tyler sing. Oh, oh my gosh. I did very low that. key. Yeah, it's beautiful, but she doesn't really sing like out loud that much. Do either of you have a pregame superstition or ritual? Other than the normal team thing that you do. Oh, I know. I know. Gal does. Have, like... <laughs> Are you talking about my the app? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Emily knows. That's a good one. I actually didn't think about that. Okay, so I have this. It's called an ab roller. I know that's, I don't know. It's, it's a, just like a workout tool, but, um, me and a few of my teammates like to do it before the game. And it's basically you roll out onto the floor and roll back. Like you're, you're on your knees and you roll out and I, I don't, it's hard to explain, but yeah. we usually do those right before game day. And it's just, they're really, really challenging, but they're really great. Cause they kind of just like, yeah, they make you just feel really strong and ready for the game, especially because we're dancing and rallying for hours and hours and hours and it's a lot on our bodies so I usually do that Emily's joined in a few times which is great oh, yeah so Gabby gets all of us going on the ab roll train <laughs> it's it really engages your core I mean we're standing for four plus hours um with yeah. our hands behind the back too so really making sure that our center is engaged is important so that we avoid injury and we're not you know, in a lot of pain the next day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I guess, I think I said this last year, but one of, I don't have any rituals, but I have superstitions that if my eyelashes don't apply on the first try, I like it's freak out. And I think that like, oh my gosh, like what's going to, what, what will happen <laughs> if my eyelashes don't apply with the first try? I'm like, it's, they got, they got to work the first try or something's going to happen very weird but do you yeah. have do you have a specific um order Emily I guess because I don't have a superstition but every game day I have like a, a definitely a distinct routine like the first thing I do I roll out of bed I go get a coffee I'm like it's game day I'm buying a coffee always I come back the and then always always and then it's like I'll I usually start with my hair first and then I do my makeup. I can't do it the other way around. I don't know. But the, I don't know if that's just, I mean, I guess I, I wouldn't do it the other way around. I guess it's a, it's just a routine. I don't know if it's a superstition. Never mind. But <laughs> I switch off the hair and the makeup order. Just whatever I'm feeling that day. Yeah. <laughs> oh. I know. One or the other. Well, yep. <laughs> Both got to get done. <laughs> See, like, I don't know. I would feel off if I'm like always doing, I always do my hair first and then I started with my makeup. So yeah, I guess that's mine. I have to do it that way. I have to do it the, you know, hair, the makeup. I'm sorry, Messi, quite a few times. So obviously we had you on the show last year when we came over to LA last year. So the question I'm going to ask both of you is, when did you find out that we were coming over to LA uh, late last year? Oh yeah. We found out like, I think the week before we no. didn't really, yeah, no, we did not get much leeway, but I'm, oh, we're, we're always, you know, ready for visitors and, um, you know, we are trying to build our, you know, presence in Australia and stuff. So, you know, we're always excited to welcome you guys and you're always, always welcome with the Los Angeles Rams and with the cheer team. Oh, I, I didn't even know until it was right before practice, I think. And I saw you there interviewing and we're like, oh my gosh, who is this? And we, you know, then, then I got really excited just knowing that you guys were there, but yeah, it was a surprise to me until walking into practice, but just knowing that you guys were coming and you were here. And then of course that was prior to the Australia trip last year that a few of our teammates got to go on. So everyone was just really exciting knowing what was to come and just about um, the partnership in general. We're so, we're just so excited. We feel so lucky to be able to kind of branch out 
um, across the world to you guys. Now, obviously, you were the one of the t t uh, three that we interviewed last year. Were you nervous? Last year, I was I was pretty nervous. Um, I think this year I wasn't as nervous, but it's difficult when we're doing it virtually. You know, you have the level of technology that you know adds a layer of uh oh, what could happen in an interview like this. Um, but I love for me interviews like this are kind of just they're fun and I, we're speaking from the heart. It's genuine. It's light. It's, um, and I love talking about my passions and what we do with the Los Angeles Rams. So this stuff is, it, it, it comes naturally for me. And I, I enjoy sharing, you know, a little bit of behind the scenes. It's fun. Now, of course, I am actually get a photo with the whole team, um, after that interview. So for, for both of you, how special was that to have me be part of your team for a couple of, uh, for about, I think it was like an hour and being that photo. <laughs> it was awesome. Uh, we wish we were oh, here. So it would be so cool if you were here because <laughs> we do have practice I know. Um, tonight, but uh, we'll, we'll have to catch you in October. Yeah, you'll have to come to practice in October for sure. I was going to say, if you want, because I have to go to practice tonight, I could just bring you and then you could be there virtually but I know it's not the same of course as as being in person <laughs> so it is an option though finish off with these last two because I know you got practice very soon so I'm glad um, and I know we've got a little bit over time at the moment uh, what would be your advice to people out there that should get involved in an NFL cheerleading team I think it would be to just continue practicing and working really hard and also like not not being too hard on yourself I think that we're all like our own toughest critics and so it's really important to believe in yourself and if if there is you know any sort of goal or aspiration you want to achieve just go for it and it's also important to surround yourself with people that are there to support you and encourage you as well I know that I wouldn't have been able to be where I am today without a really great support system, but most importantly, you know, telling myself that I can do it and believing in myself. And it sounds, you know, it sounds very cliche, but it's, it's so true and, you know, just never give up, keep on trying and, um, you can really do anything that you want. Yeah, I totally agree with what Abby said, just keep working really hard. Consistency is key, in my opinion, um, for anyone who, you know, really wants to make it to a professional team. I would say really keep your networking doors open. Don't be afraid to make a friend with someone on Instagram or LinkedIn, wherever it is, and ask for their number and have a conversation um, that's really going to give you insight into what the team values. Um, research, you know, is very important as you're going to audition and will be in audition season very shortly. So I would say, you know, those are some little tools that will help you um, achieve, you know, this goal. But again, never give up and surround yourself with people that are going to support you and motivate you to, you know, be your best self. And on that note too, I mean, we do live in a world now where everyone is really, really connected, especially with social media. And when it comes to, you know, preparing for something that you're really, you know, wanting to go for and, um, you know, if it's a goal, if it's NFL cheerleading or anything, truly, um, as Emily mentioned, just don't be afraid to reach out and ask the questions. And um, we get so much of that towards audition time. And we're all so happy and like excited to answer those questions for people that are really eager and curious and want to know more. And maybe that's their first time trying out. And we've all been in their shoes where it's kind of, you know, the unknown is scary. But I think that, you know, that's why I love this team as well as we're all so approachable and and really want to help people yeah. that, you know, are interested. And so, yeah, I think it's, it's a great idea to, to not be afraid to ask questions and know more. Curiosity is a really great thing, especially when it comes to 
wanting to achieve a goal. Finish with a slight heart of one, two part question. Have you had any strange requests from fans when you have photos with them before the game? And then the second part of that question is, uh, I have to ask, have you had any close calls with players or the football on game day? I personally have not had a close call with um, a player or a football coming my way. Thankfully, I know one of our teammates this past season, there's a video of her like having to duck because the ball came flying over her head. Um, so it it does happen um, and it can be very dangerous. So, but no, that has not happened to me. Um, we do get some interesting fan interactions this past season. Uh, we were taking photos in front of a step and repeat and a fan started to fall backwards into the step and repeat. And he started saying, catch me, catch me, catch me. But we couldn't catch him. He didn't completely fall. <laughs> but in those situations, um, it's it's difficult because there's not oh much that we can do. Yeah. Um, so some interesting things happen. I mean, people you know, are, it's a, it's a football game. They're tailgating, they're enjoying, you know, their beverages. So th things happen. I'm trying to think, I think what comes to mind really is just a lot of people that, um, I think it's funny. They'll like come up to us with their babies. They're like young yes. infant children. They're like, can you hold her? Can you hold him? And that's always very interesting because it's like, we love children. We just can't hold them. We're not allowed to do that. So that's always like very funny. Um, in terms of, I think my very first game, it was a preseason game, like very first time on the field. I remember we were playing, I believe it was the Bears. And, you know, I'm new. I don't know anything yet. And I'm just so amazed by everything. I'm looking everywhere and I wasn't paying attention. And there was a close call with me. Um, and the guy just ran right past me. And it was almost like he, you could just feel this force going by you. And like, I remember like wind in my hair and I was like, oh my gosh, this man is huge. And thankfully it wasn't, it wasn't too crazy, but he was very close and he was able to get out of the way. And it was also a huge wake up call for me, like game one on the team. Okay. I got to pay attention every single second I get, cause we are right there and these men are huge. So, you know, it's a, it's a little dangerous, I guess, but just got to be alert. Well, both of you, this is one of the best interviews we've done. And uh, it's also been one of the most fun ones we've had. Uh, thank you so much for getting up so many times, especially we've gone incredibly overtime. Uh, but it's been awesome. Thank you so much. Enjoy practice tonight. Um, and, uh, of course, I can't wait to get over to LA a bit later on in the year. Yeah, thanks so much for having so us. Fun. It was so nice to talk to you, and we're really excited for you to come to LA this year, later this year. Yeah, but we'll see you soon. <laughs> no worries. And that's uh, Emily and Gabby there joining us from the LA Rams cheerleaders. Of course, uh, we'll put, uh, of course, if you want to uh, check out uh, what they uh, what the team does, of course, on Insta. And of course, uh, we'll put all the details up as well on the website as well. There's more on the Smash Evening Show right after this. Don't go away here on the Stray Day Weekend.